this is the inside of the Bailey Unicorn Seville. If I firstly move to the main control panel, I can turn the 12 volt on just here. Beside that, we then have water pump on and off. We need the water pump on so we can get water out the taps and fill the boiler if it's been drained down. Next we have the master switch for the lights. These can all be individually turned on and off on their own switches. And then lastly we have awning light on and off. All other information is given via scrolling. So as you can see at the moment we have the time, it's letting us know that we've got main supply connected and that the water pump is on. If I then arrow across we have the user settings and if I press the enter button we can go into that and we can alter the contrast, turn key beeps on and off, warnings on and off so it'll just let you know if you lose main supply etc. How quickly before it goes into standby when you're not using it. Just leave the auto battery on, don't need to worry about that. And what firmware it's running. If I now just exit back out of that, we then have the internal temperature, the voltage of the leisure battery, and then we end up back at the beginning. To change the time, just hold the enter button in. We'll then begin to flash, then just use your arrow buttons to alter the time. If I now move just underneath that, we then have the controls for the Aldi heating and hot water. At the moment, it's not working. All we just need to do is just press any button on here. And as you'll see, you'll then get a series of little icons, etc. So you'll see at the moment that the system is off. And if I use the arrow, we can go over all these different icons until we eventually end up back at off. So, as I just said, the system's off at the moment. Just down here, it's just giving us an internal temperature. And over here, it's just letting us know that we are currently hooked up to mains electricity. If I now press the on button just here, we can turn the system on and then if I move across we have a little picture of a thermometer and this is for the heating. Now you'll see on the on and off we have plus and the minus just literally just pick whatever temperature you would like it to be inside the caravan and it will drop all the way down to five degrees for frost protection as you can see and it will go all the way up to a very toasty 30 degrees you see at the moment there's no symbol here. As soon as the heating comes into operation, we'll see you get a symbol just there. That is just representing the circulation pump and just letting you know that the heating has come on. Next we have a little picture of the tap and this is just hot water boost. As soon as you turn the system on, it will begin to heat up hot water. So you don't need to do anything else. What you can do is perform a boost on the boiler, which is very handy if there's going to be more than one of you having showers in quick succession of each other, or if you just want hot water very quickly. All again you need to do is just press the on button and it will turn itself on. If the heating is running, it will turn the heating off, as indicated just here by it disappearing. So even though I've now turned the heating on, hot water on etc the system hasn't actually fully fired up yet because we haven't given it a power source and that is what these two here are so you've got a little picture of a flame which is for gas so if you want to be running the system on gas just again go from off and just press on and then just move across and you'll now see so system is on heating is on because we've got the little picture of the circulation pump this will obviously go off as soon as it's up to the temperature you've asked. And it's obviously heating up hot water and we're using gas with a little picture of the flame. If I now go back to the flame and I now hit off, 
I can turn it back off again. And if we're connected to mains electricity, we can run it on the main supply. And that's just by going to this one just here. And again now, if I just hit on, we can run it on main supply using one kilowatt, two kilowatts, or three kilowatts. So this is just dependent on the amperage of the site you're on to try and avoid tripping. So now you can see system on, heating on, hot water on, and we're now using main supply at three kilowatts. What we can also do is if we have both power sources available to us, is use both those power sources. That way we will get up the temperature extremely quickly. This is very effective in the winter months. But I will now turn the gas back off and just leave it on the main supply. You can make this a little bit more tricky if you wish. If I now go across and I go down to the lower icon at the bottom, just here, and I now press the plus button, you'll see we get a series of icons all appear and along the bottom here. Basically you can set timers etc in here. I do suggest that you read the instructions if you are going to use this part just here because it can be a little bit tricky to use. If I now just turn the system back off again, there we go, it's now back off. But when you turn the system back on again, it will always remember the last thing it was on. The isolator switch for the heating system on main supply is just here. So if this has been turned off, you will not be able to heat your hot water or run your heating on mains until it is switched back on again. And if I now just remove the bench seat cushions just here, and I now just lift up, we have storage beneath. We also have the water pump just here. It's an internal water pump on this particular caravan. And we also have the surge dampener just here. And then we also have the Aldi boiler just here. To drain the Aldi boiler down for winterization and for travel, it's all just done on the yellow drain valve just here. All you need to do is just firstly make sure that the water pump is turned off and then it's just a matter of flapping it up and it will then begin to drain all the water out of the boiler underneath the caravan at this point just here. I always suggest that if you are fully winterizing the caravan that you also go around and open up all of the taps as well because this will release any airlocks in the system and help it drain down more efficiently. When it comes to refilling the boiler make sure the valve is flat back across like it is at the moment close all of the taps in the caravan, fill up the aqua roll, drop the submersible into the aqua roll, turn the master switch on followed by the water pump and then the water pump will then begin to reprime the boiler. Let it run for a few minutes and then begin opening up the taps. Once they're running freely on both hot and cold reclose and then the system will fully reprime itself. Underneath the other bench seat you will find again storage, you also have the freestanding table underneath here and the siren for the alarm. The consumer unit just sits here. So along the top here we have the individual MCBs, you can see they are labelled. And then we have the main RCD and test button just here. So if anything's not working on main supply, just check to see whether you have tripped. And then beneath that are the 12 volt fuses. Again, they're all labeled up. So if anything's not working on 12 volt, just check to see 
if a fuse has blown. Tucked in here is the rear of the battery box. So the main 12 volt fuse off the leisure battery just sits here. The aerial for the TV and radio is just here. So to raise the mast, just unscrew the collar just here and then push the mast up and then get it into the position you require and then lock it into place. Try to avoid over tightening these collars because you do run the risk of splitting them. This green window here represents the back of the aerial so you roughly know which way it's pointing and you'll see at the moment that it says H for horizontal. What we can do by turning the tail just here is flip the aerial into the vertical position for additional tuning if required. On this side here is the digital amplifier for the television aerial, so on and off on the top here, and then control the boost here. Do make sure it's on before trying to tune a television in, or otherwise it will not find any channels. This lead here goes directly to the external TV aerial point located in the battery box. So if you are going to be using a sights aerial or a freestanding aerial of your own, you will need to undo either of the TV points that you want to be using this on. So we have a TV point at the front here and another TV point just here. Radio on just here on the button that says source. Volume control just in the center, CD in here, eject on here, and you can also plug into the auxiliary port. Change tracks or search for radio stations just here. We have an easy graphic equalizer just up here. And then just back off again just here. And then make sure that the aerial is down for travel. Microwave just here. It's always advisable to make sure that all contents are removed for travel. This will work when the caravan is connected to mains electricity and it's plugged in just up here. We have quick start just here and stop and then we have power levels defrost etc just there, timer just there and if you go the other way obviously as you can see it can go right the way up to virtually an hour. Automatic fridge this side. So at the moment the fridge is in the off position. If the caravan is connected to mains electricity, just flick it to the little picture of the two pin plug just there to run it on mains. Next we have 12 volt maintain. This is the one we have it on to keep the fridge cold whilst the caravan is being towed. And then last, if we have no mains electricity connected, we can run the fridge on gas. To light it on gas, we need to come across to the temperature control, hold it in, and then press the igniter. And then what we want is this line here to drift out of the white into the green to indicate that it is lit. As you can see, it's now slowly creeping up. Just continue to hold the temperature control in for a few moments and then once you let go as long as it stays in the green you know it's lit if it drops back off again just repeat the process 
This can sometimes take a couple of goes, especially if you put a new gas bottle on, and there may be a bit of air in the system. Open the fridge just here. Removable freezer box at the top. And then as soon as you turn it back off, it will automatically put itself back out again. Hob just here, so we've got the electric hot plate that like the microwave will work when the caravan is connected to main supply. Operates just here and the red light comes on to let you know it's in operation. And then we have the three gas rings and this is just push in, twist and push the igniter. And then beneath that we have the grill. Again, just push in, twist, and press the igniter. And then the oven beneath this. Storage beneath the oven, but you'll also find the majority of the gas isolation taps for the caravan as well. So we have the cooker here, fridge, heating and hot water, and the barbecue point. They're all in the on position. Quite frankly, they can stay like that. I always say if you do smell gas in the caravan, go to the source and turn the gas bottle off. There is also two plugs underneath here, both plugged in. They are for the electric hot plate and the fridge. Sink, training board and sink cover. They can stow just above the cutlery drawer just here and then just push this across to pop them into place. To lower the spare wheel, you'll see that there's this grommet in the floor just here, just remove it and then just pop the spare wheel winding handle into place and then just wind it down. Washroom. So in the wardrobe you will find the header tank for the heating system. All you need to do is just make sure that the fluid is between the minimum and the maximum level. Always take your reading once the heating is up to temperature as it will expand in the tank. You can top this up if required yourself just by unscrewing the cap just here. Do make sure that you are using the correct Aldi top-up solution if you are going to do this. Fit for toilet just here. The bowl does swivel to open to the cassette. Just slide the grey lever across just here. And then push the blue button to flush and then close again. If this has been left open and you try to remove the cassette from the outside it will not come out so if you do feel resistance just make sure that nobody's left it open and then level indicator for the cassette just here so it will illuminate. Basin and then the shower cubicle do make sure that the shower screen doors are secure for travel. With the front beds you can have two singles or one large double bed. For the double 
just slightly lift up and then pull across and then just pop the cushions into place just like so I personally flip the cushions over as they're a lot flatter on the other side so it makes them a little less bumpy Mm-hmm. 